Okay, hi, good evening everyone. Hope you're all okay and thank you so much for coming along tonight. So we're on the second part of the masterclass tonight. We're going to look at T accounts, um, which is uh, a very interesting area. I've always enjoyed T accounts and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll be learning a lot together tonight. Um, hopefully you've all got your spreadsheet open. There was a link on the Facebook group earlier that Natasha posted um, to sort of have a little workbook to work along with it. So hopefully you've got that with you. But if you haven't, don't worry, it's really not a problem. A, because I'll be working through what you see on the screen and B, because we'll be recording it anyway and it will be up on the YouTube channel probably tomorrow morning. So I'm just gonna fiddle with a couple of the settings on here. And there's just one thing to say, if you don't mind, if you could all keep your microphone on mute, there's a little button, a little microphone symbol just by the control panel. If you could just keep that on mute for me, that would be much appreciated. And it's not because I don't want to hear you, it's just to eliminate background noise. Obviously we wanna make this as clear as possible and if there is any microphones on, then uh, it does create a little bit of background noise, which is a little bit annoying. So if you could just make sure your microphone on your control panel is muted, that would be really, really good. Okay, so another thing to say before we start is the chat box will be live throughout the session. Now how quickly I get to your question if you have one I'm not quite sure because I'll be concentrating on the screen here obviously but if you have got any questions as I go along or if you've got any comments or anything you'd like to say at all then just type them into the chat box and I'll do my best to answer it as the session goes along but if I don't manage to answer it then don't worry because I will I will try and do it sort of after the main session I'm going to be here till eight o'clock anyway I'm expecting the sort of demonstration to last probably about half an hour to 40 minutes depending on how we get on. Um, it's not gonna be a, a massive demonstration. I'm just gonna basically go through the basics of T accounts and the basics of debits and credits. And I don't wanna make it too long and too complicated, but at the same time, I wanna cover as much as I can and explain it as well as I can. Um, the reason we're sort of breaking the masterclass down into quite a few different sessions is because I think it's better to learn this sort of thing in sort of bite-sized chunks in smaller, smaller sessions really, so you can sort of pick it up a little bit better. The first session we did, which was uh, a fortnight ago, which was, uh, it wasn't really looking at T accounts and it wasn't even really looking at debits and credits. It was basically looking at how different transactions affect the balance sheet. It was really to get an understanding of how accountancy works. And I think we, we achieved that in the first session. It seemed very popular. Um, and it's on the YouTube channel now. So don't worry if you've missed it, you can always go back to the YouTube channel and catch up a bit later. And as I say, this one here that we're doing tonight will be up on the YouTube channel at some point in the morning. So you can catch up on that as well if you want a refresher of it or if you've missed anything or obviously for anyone who's missed the session or couldn't come along due to other commitments, then it will be uploaded in the morning. Okay, so I think that's the sort of basics covered and the housekeeping covered. So I think I'm okay to start now. But as I say, got any comments as we go along, then please feel free to use the chat box. That's what it's there for. So as I say, the last session, the first session of the masterclass was really explaining the basics of accounting, what assets, liabilities and capital are, and really how they affect the balance sheet. I, I used the, the seven points that I've got on the screen now last week to demonstrate how those transactions affected the balance sheet. And for consistency, I'm going to do exactly the same thing again tonight. I'm gonna to use the same transactions, but this time I'm gonna show you how it affects the T accounts. Um, so a little bit different to what we did last week, a little bit, I guess, more advanced. Um, and in the next session, which will be in a fortnight's time, we'll be look at balancing off accounts. And I know that's another area that does cause a bit of confusion and people do struggle with that. So hopefully we'll, uh, we'll make that a bit clearer when that comes as well. So in tonight's session, we're not actually going to balance the T accounts off. We're just going to make all the entries in the T accounts, but we're gonna take it really slowly and I'm gonna explain how each transaction affects which account, why it affects it, etc., etc. And hopefully you can see this nice and clearly in front of you. And if you have got the spreadsheet open um, to work with, so much the better. But if you haven't, don't worry, because as I say, we're gonna go through it really slowly on here anyway. So you can see here in this part of the screen, I've got the famous dead click um, formula, if you like. There's loads and loads of different ways of remembering debits and credits. Um, I found when I was studying that dead click was a really, really good way of learning it. 
there's lots of different options there's lots of ways of learning it and don't get too hung up on which option you use i think because there's so many people tend to get a bit confused about which one they should follow and how they should follow it etc etc but i think dead click is is quite a basic one um, and it's quite uh, quite useful quite easy to explain so dead click as you'll see we're going to go, go through it step by step so the D and the C of dead click, the D stands for debit and the C stands for credit. So what I've done with dead click is I've split it into two boxes, as you can see here. So we've got the dead and the click. It's a bit unfortunate to keep saying the word dead, but it is, it is one of the best ways to remember it. So in the, in the dead box, if you like, we've got the, the D for debit at the top, and we've got the three different types of accounts that we, we debit. So we've got expenses, assets, and drawings. And in the click box, which is the bottom half of this, this table here, we've got the C for credit, and we've got liabilities, income, and capital. So fairly straightforward, but there's one really, really important rule that we have to remember, is that dead click only applies if we're increasing the value of the accounts. Now, I know lots and lots of people that have learned dead click, but have forgotten about the increase bit. And it can get a bit confusing. Let's say, for example, you're decreasing the value of an asset account. Now, if you're doing that, you'd need to credit it. But as you'll see, the assets appear in the debit side. So it does cause confusion sometimes um, if you just think of dead click as it is and you don't think about what effect you're having on the transactions by using this table. And the effect you're having by following all of these rules is by increasing the code. So that's equally as important to remember as a dead click itself that each of these items here represents an increase in the accounts so for example if you debit assets you're increasing the value of the assets if you debit drawings if you debit expenses you're increasing that value and likewise if you credit income you're increasing it if you credit capital you're increasing it and if you credit liabilities you're increasing it so while dead click is fantastic and it's really good to remember you must remember which way it works and it works by increasing now how do you remember that um a good way a good way of remembering it this is a really morbid way of remembering it but it's how i always thought of it because all these accounts relate to an increase um, and this says dead i always think of it and please pardon the expression of raising the dead so raising the dead, raising means increase. So that's how I used to remember when I was first learning T-accounts and double entry, that dead click always increases the account. So just remember raising the dead. It's not a very nice thing to remember, but it really, really helped me to remember what you do when you follow dead click. So hopefully that makes sense. So what we're gonna do is we're going to work through these seven transactions here, and I'm gonna explain each time what's happening and how we're using dead click each for each transaction. Now, for simplicity, you may notice if you were on last fortnight session that all the accounts I used were balance sheet accounts. So I'm following the same logic tonight. As I say, I'm doing exactly the same transactions as I was doing a fortnight ago, and I'm using exactly the same accounts. And as you'll see, what I've done is on the left-hand side of the account, I've got the name of the account, and on the right-hand side, I've got what it represents on the balance sheet. So as you'll see, I've got assets, capital, and liabilities. So I've got assets, capital, and liabilities. I haven't got income or expenses. Um, income and expenses form part of the profit and loss account. And it's really for simplicity, last week, sorry, last fortnight session that I didn't um, use the profit and loss account as well because I wanted to get the sort of basic concept of the balance sheet across to you. And likewise this week. So we're not using any profit or profit and loss codes this week. That will come, but they'll be in later sessions. So it's really for simplicity, really for ease, that we're just using balance sheet accounts tonight in this example. So we won't be using expenses, we won't be using income, and as it happens on this example, we won't be using drawings, but we will be using the rest. But it's obviously not a real life example, it's an example that's been made for you for simplicity, and really to try and explain and make clear how dead click works and how double entry works and how T accounts work. So hopefully that's all okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start moving through the seven transactions that I've got here on the screen. So as I say, if you've got your spreadsheet open in front of you, then please feel free to follow with me what I'm doing. But uh, 
if you're uh, if you're not not following me, then don't worry too much. So I've just got a question from Lynn in the chat box. She says, "Are any control accounts being covered tonight?" The answer is no, Lynn. I'm just literally covering the accounts that are on the screen. Control accounts absolutely vital, and they will definitely come further down the line. But I guess the sort of concept, as I say in tonight's session, is just to understand debit and credit and which side of the T account the relevant entries go. But it's a very good point. Control accounts are very important, and they will be covered further down the line. Okay, no problem. So number one is the introduction of capital. So we've got a sole trader here called B. Blake and B. Blake started in business and deposited £60,000 into a bank account open specially for the business. So as we said last week, every single transaction has got a debit and a credit. There's always two entries to every single transaction. There has to be or else our trial balance will never balance. So our first entry, we're going to start off with £60,000 in the bank account. So we know the bank account is an asset. It's an asset on our balance sheet because it's something we have, we have in our possession. Um, in this case, we're talking about a bank account that we've got money in. We're not going to go into overdrawn bank accounts, overdrafts, which are obviously liabilities. We're not going to go into those. We're going to assume that for this example, the bank account has money in. So it's something we own. So it is an asset. So the bank account, if it's got money in it, if there's a plus balance in the bank account, it's always an asset. So. We're depositing £60,000 into the bank account here. So we're going to move into this cell here. Now, if you weren't here for last time session, or if you haven't seen it yet, I gave out a very useful, or what I think was a useful tip when you're using spreadsheets. And whenever you're typing numbers into a spreadsheet, I've always done this right from my first days of using spreadsheets, is to type the equal sign first. Now, the reason I do that is because if you're, let's say you're um, you're working on a sole trader's account, you've got a pile of receipts in front of you, and um, you're obviously not going to sit there on the calculator and work them all out before you enter them into Excel. So the easiest thing to do when you're doing an example like that is to type the equal sign first, and then you can literally type the sum as you're doing it, if that kind of makes sense. So if you press equals on your keyboard, you can then put in equals one, plus two, plus three, plus four. So you don't have to work the sum out and then put the answer into the spreadsheet. So I hope that makes sense. I say I did cover it last time. And I, I, I've always used equals whenever I type in a number. It's like second nature in spreadsheets to me now. Um, whenever I type a number into Excel or numbers, which I'm using now, I always type equals first. So our bank account's got 60,000 in. So we're going to put 60,000 pounds in the bank account there. OK, so as I say, the bank account is an asset. We're increasing the asset. And as we know, all dead click applies to increasing the assets, which is a debit. So £60,000 has been debited to our bank account. So for our double entry, there's obviously another side to the account. In this occasion, on this occasion, I should say, B. Blake has deposited £60,000. So the credit entry is in his capital account. I'm saying him, I'm assuming it's a man. So I'm going to say in the capital account. So the capital account is on the bottom half of dead click here. Don't forget, we're still focusing on the word increase in dead click. So an increase in capital is a credit. So we go to our capital account. We go to the credit side and I'm going to put my equals in again and I'm going to type 60,000 in there. So there we go. We have a debit and a credit entry and hopefully the, um, the T account logic has been explained there and uh, we're OK with that transaction. So we're going to move on to number two. So number two is the purchase of an asset by check. So Blake buys a small shop for £32,000 paying by check. So again, two entries to every transaction. Let's think about the bank side of it first. He's paying by check, so we're effectively losing 32,000 out of our bank account. Now, if we go back to dead click, now if you remember, the bank account is an asset, and if you increase an asset, it's a debit, but this time we're decreasing the asset. So it's obviously going to be the opposite. So we've spent £32,000. We're reducing the bank account. We're decreasing an asset. So it's a credit. So that's where you can see the logic of the dead click box and the increase, which you should always remember. Because increase an asset is a debit, but this time we're not increasing an asset. We're decreasing it. So it's a credit. So we go back to the bank account. We're on the credit side. I'm going to type my famous equal sign and I'm going to say 32,000 goes in there. 
like so. So we've credited the bank account by 32,000. So we obviously need a debit entry somewhere. So we've got the purchase of an asset, which is in this case, a small shop. So here's the T account for the shop. Now the shop, again, is something you own, okay? It's your property, it's your asset. So there's the asset. We're increasing the value because it, previously it was zero. We're now increasing it to 32,000 pounds. Increasing an asset is a debit. So we debit the shop account with 32,000 pounds. Okay, there we go. So hopefully we're all okay with that so far. We're gonna move on to number three now. And number three is the purchase of an asset and then the, and the incurring of a liability. So a slightly more complicated one this time. So Blake, the proprietor, he's buying some goods for 7,000 pounds from D Smith. Now, as I said at the start of the session or pretty soon into it, um, all these accounts on the screen tonight are balance sheet accounts. So when we say, when we say um, Blake is buying some goods, we're in ordinary circumstances, you know, he'd be trading and he'd be buying um, items off for the profit and loss account. So he'd be buying cost of goods sold purchases, you know, direct expenses, that sort of thing. But for simplicity, all these accounts are balance sheet accounts. So we've got an account called inventory, which if you remember on the last session I used. So it's basically stock. So what we're saying is Blake has bought some stock for £7,000 from D Smith and agrees to pay for them sometime within the next two weeks. So the goods are being bought on credit effectively. So it's not this transaction is not going to affect the bank account because we're not paying for them immediately. So I've got the inventory account here, which, as I said, this this is the account we're going to use for this example. So we bought some goods for £7,000. So there's our inventory account. It's previously got nothing in it. Again, we're increasing an asset here. We started off with zero value stock. We've now got 7,000. So we've got an increase in stock. And we know stock is an asset because we own it. So there's the asset. We're increasing it. So it's a debit. So we click on, click on inventory and I go to equals and I say 7,000. So there we go. Now the other side of the entry we know has got to be a credit. So we bought the goods from D Smith. So D Smith is now our creditor, okay? So we haven't paid for these goods straight away. We're going to pay for them sometime within the next two weeks. So D Smith is now gonna become a creditor on our books, on our balance sheet. And D Smith is now effectively going to be a liability. He's a liability because we owe 7,000 pounds to him. So he's gonna become a liability of the business and Using this logic here, we're increasing his liability. At the moment, our liability to D Smith is zero. We're increasing the liability. Increase liability is credit. So we move up to D Smith account. We're on the credit side and we put £7,000 in there. OK, so all our entries balanced so far. And we're going to move on to the next transaction, which is number four, which is sale of an asset on credit. So again, we're not in ordinary circumstances, when we say when we sell things, it will be classed as income on the P&L. Again, for this purpose, we're not um, working on P&L codes. We're just working on balance sheet items. So we're going to say it's sale of an inventory item on credit. So goods which costs £600 were sold to Jay Brown for the same amount, the money to be paid later. OK, so we're basically losing £600 worth of our of our stock, if you like, and we're selling selling them to Jay Brown. We're not selling them for cash immediately, so it doesn't touch the bank account, this transaction, but they're being sold to Jay Brown. So Jay Brown now becomes a debtor on our books. Uh, Jay Brown now owes us money, so he becomes a current asset. So let's move through that transaction. The goods which cost £600 were sold to Jay Brown for the same amount. So there's our inventory of stock. So this is the goods we're talking about. Now, ordinarily, an increase in our stock, in our asset would be a debit, but now the stock is disappearing. So we're decreasing it. So we know that although our inventory is an asset and an increase is a debit, it therefore stands that a decrease is a credit. So we go to the credit side of our inventory account and we say £600 in there like that. So the goods were sold to Jay Brown for the same amount, the money to be paid later. So we've got an asset account for Jay Brown. Now, the reason Jay Brown is an asset is because Jay Brown is now a debtor of the business. Jay Brown now owes the business. That's owes this time, O-W-E-S, apart 
um, besides owns, which is not, it's owes, owes the business £600. So J Brown will become a current asset because J Brown owes us money and we're increasing the value of his debt. So we're increasing an asset, which is a debit, which follows, it goes in there. So we're going to say equals £600 in there like that. Okay. Right, we'll pause for one second while I have a slurp of water. So hopefully so far, with those four transactions, that's making sense. If it's not, or you've got any comments at all, please do type something into the chat box so you don't understand it. Or if you do, that's great. If you're following along with your spreadsheet, that's great too. Hopefully it's your spreadsheet's all balancing as well. So we're going to move on to number five. So number five is sale of an asset for immediate payment. So goods which cost £400 were sold to D Daily for the same amount. Daily paid for them immediately by cheque. So Michelle says, is anyone else having problems with the audio? Hopefully not. Hopefully the audio is all OK and you can you can hear me OK. I've not had any other comments, Michelle. So I, I, I don't like to say I hope. You did initially, Claire Ann, but you're. I hope everyone's okay now. Lindsay says all good. So, yeah, hopefully all good. Hopefully all good. Brilliant. It's a bit robotic, Holly B says. I'm not quite sure if she means my voice or, or the sound, but hopefully not my voice. Okay, well, hopefully it's all okay. And hopefully when we, when we submit the recording in the morning, it will come out okay. Lovely voice. Oh, thank you very much, Eden. That's very nice of you. <laughs> Okay, so it sounds like for most people it's okay. So I'm sorry if you're getting a bit of distortion or I sound a bit robotic. I don't really normally sound robotic, I promise you. Okay, so we'll move on to number five. So as I said, um, I've just described the transaction, but we'll just quickly go through it again. Goods which cost £400 were sold to D Daily for the same amount. And Daily paid for them immediately by cheque. So because Daily paid for them immediately, we don't need to create a debtor account for him at this stage. Um, D Daily is paid us straight away, so the money will go straight into the bank account, so there's no need to create a debtor account. So, goods which cost £400 were sold for the same amount. So, we're going back to our inventory account again. And if we remember, our inventory account is an asset. And again, we're selling goods, so we're decreasing the value of the asset. So, following the dead click logic, an increase will be a debit, so a decrease is a credit. So we're going to move down to there and we're going to say equals £400. OK, now, as I say, Daly's paid for them immediately. We've put the cheque in the bank account straight away, so he doesn't owe us the money anymore. So there's no need to create a debtor account. So we're going to go to the bank. We've put £400 in the bank. The bank is an asset. It's something we own. So an increase in an asset is a debit. So we go back up there and we go equals £400. So just before I move on to number six, I've got two more to go. Um, I've said about O's and owns, or they're two very, very similar sounding words, but very, very different. So if I'll just quickly run through these T accounts and just explain what I mean by that. So as I say, the bank account is an asset. It's something we own. I'm just going to, someone's put the microphone on, so I'm just going to mute again. Uh, just, if you could just keep your microphones off, guys, that would be fantastic. Otherwise, I get a little bit of feedback. So I've just muted everyone again. So there we go. So say the bank account is an asset. <laughs> Having a little bit of microphone trouble. Someone's got their microphone on. So apologies for that bit of distortion there. Um, keep an eye on that. So say the bank account is an asset because it's something we own. If the bank account's got more than a pound in it, it's got money in it, then it's an asset of the of the trade, so something we own. So it's an always an asset account. If it's something we owe, if it's an overdraft, if it's a liability, um, that's a different story. But for this case, when there's money in the bank account, it's classed as an asset because we own that, the business owns it. Now, if we just move down the accounts in the order that they're on the screen. Now, B. Blake, B. Blake is the proprietor, the 60,000 pounds capital he's put in. It's a liability, it's a, a capital is a form of liability. Obviously, it's different, treated differently to other liabilities because capital is uh, the owner's money, in effect. But the business effectively owes it back to the owner. That's why it's a liability, if that makes sense. It's basically another liability of the business, but it's owed back to the proprietor rather than any trade creditors or anything like that. So from the business's point of view, it owes B. Blake £60,000 because that's the money that was put into it. So... B. 
be blake the capital account is something the business owes it owes it back to be blake at some point so moving down the, the list again we've got the shop that's something we own so it's an asset on the balance sheet and likewise with the inventory or the stock again that's something the business has in its possession so it's an asset now d smith if you remember we bought some goods on on credit from uh, d smith so we owe the business owes d smith seven thousand pounds so it's a liability and finally j brown the reason j brown is an asset is because j brown owes the business 600 pound so we have 600 pound owing on the balance sheet and so therefore it's an asset so hopefully that makes a bit more sense um, and sort of differentiate between what's owed which is always a liability and what's owned which is always an asset so hopefully that makes sense so we've got two more transactions to go. So we've got the payment of a liability next, number six. So it says Blake pays a check for £3,000 to D Smith in part payment of the amount owing. So as we saw just now, we've got a liability of £7,000 to D Smith. So Blake has now paid a check for £3,000. So it's obviously going to reduce that liability. So it not only reduces the liability, it reduces the bank account as well. So let's look at those two sides of the transaction in logical order. So the first thing we'll look at is how it affects the bank account. So we're paying a check for £3,000, so it's coming out of the bank account. Now, if you remember, an increase in the asset of the bank account is a debit. We're decreasing the value of the bank account, so it's obviously the opposite, which is a credit. So we move up here, and we're going to say £3,000 come out of the account. And the other side of that is we're paying off some of the liability that the business has to D Smith. OK, so again, this is where it's important to remember. I guess this transaction, what I'm about to do, highlights it more than anything, really, is remembering the importance of the increase in dead click. Um, because what we're doing this time is we're, rem we're having to remember we've got to decrease the liability. Now, if I didn't have that word increase there, and I just said to someone, we need to change the value of the liability account. Now, they would probably say, ah, liability, it must be a credit. But of course, it's not because we're not increasing the liability account. We're decreasing it. So as well as remembering dead click, always remember that word as well. So it's a liability account. Now, if we're increasing the value of the liability, it will be a credit. But we're not. We're decreasing the value of the liability, which the business has. So it's a debit. So it's by £3,000. So there we go. There's the other side of the entry to that. OK, so the last thing we've got, we're nearly at the end of the, of the example now. So the last thing we've got is collection of an asset. So we've got Jay Brown, who originally owed Blake £600, makes a part payment of £200 by cheque. So we'll just review that first. So there's Jay Brown. Jay Brown's a current asset on the balance sheet because they're a debtor. So they owe us £600, but they've now paid us £200 by cheque. So the £200, we're going to pay the cheque into the bank account. Bank account's an asset. We're increasing the asset because we're increasing the value of what's in the bank. So it's a debit. So we move up here and we say he's paid £200. There we go. Now, Jay Brown, who's a debtor, is also an asset on the business. OK, it's also on the balance sheet. Um, classed as a current asset so we have to remember the asset here but this time we're reducing the value of the asset because we're reducing the value uh, that Jay Brown owes us he owes owes Blake I should say he owed Blake 600 pound but has now paid 200 pound now this time an increase in asset would be a debit but we're not we're decreasing the value of the asset because the money that's owed to us by Jay Brown is now reducing so it's the opposite to this. So we're going to credit. So we're going to put 200 in there just like that. So that's those entries completed. So I'm going to move back to the top of the screen. So you can see on the debit side of the bank account, all the money that's come in, the 60,000 that we deposited, the 400 pounds that we sold were paid for immediately and the 200 pound that um, Jay Brown has paid us by check. And on the credit side, the money that's gone out of the bank account, we've got 32,000 when we bought the shop and we've got 3,000 pounds that we paid to D Smith um, for goods that we'd earlier bought. Now, B Blake, we've just got one entry. Now, that's pretty standard, I guess, for a capital account. There's not really going to be a 
huge amount of transactions that go through the capital account, obviously. Normally, the first transaction to start the business affects the capital account, but apart from that, it will normally stay pretty much the same. But just to reiterate what I said earlier, the reason it's a credit is because capital is a liability. Although it's, it's the owner's money effectively, but it's a liability of the business because the business owes, in this case, £60,000 back to the proprietor. So capital is really another liability. It's only um, separated out because it's a specific liability. It's a liability that's owed back to the owner. Hopefully that makes sense. So the shop, again, if you're buying a shop, there's not going to be many transactions on this account. The only transaction is a debit for 32000 which is the original purchase of the shop. Now, the inventory or the stock here, we bought £7,000 of it originally, which was there. So that's on the debit side. And on the credit side, we sold some stock. We sold some stock for 600 to Jay Brown, and we sold some for 400 which we got paid immediately by check for. And the last two accounts, we've got D Smith. So D Smith's a liability account. Um, originally, we bought the £7,000 worth of stock from D Smith. So we, the business owed D Smith the £7,000, um, but we then paid £3,000 of that. So in effect, we now owe D Smith £4,000. And the last account, which is an asset account, which is J Brown, it's an asset because it's a debtor. It's a it's a debtor to the business. It's a it's a it's a positive figure on the balance sheet. It's a current asset. Um, originally, it was six hundred pound because we sold some goods there for six hundred, and since that time, Jay Brown has paid us two hundred pounds of that six hundred. So again, there's four hundred owing on that. So hopefully that's half an hour. So hopefully that example is proved worthwhile to you. And I know I've kept on and on and on about the increase word here in dead click, but it is really important to remember. And hopefully sort of moving through that example, you'll realize how important that word is and how it's always important to remember that dead click applies to increasing accounts. And if you do remember the raising the dead analogy, then it's a bit morbid, but it's uh, it's a good way of remembering it. Eventually, if you pardon the pun, it will click. And it, it did for me quite quickly, I must admit. I've always always been really, really loved double entry. And uh, um, I did sort of, I was fairly lucky, I guess, that I picked it up fairly quickly. But I know it does cause a problem for lots of people. And I know it is it's difficult. If you can't get your head around it, then it's very, very difficult to struggle with. And it can be quite frustrating. Um, I remember when I was studying it, uh, there was quite a few students who were struggling and it's it's very, very hard until it until it does click in your head. It's very, very difficult to, to, to understand. But once you sort of understand the logic and hopefully I've explained the logic a bit more tonight, um, then um, I think eventually it does click. Now, Eden's just said dead click seems better than pearls. I, pearls is another one. I'm, I won't go into pearls now. Um, but because uh, I think dead click is easier than pearls, but pearls is another one, another one to use. Absolutely. Now, Sam's just said to me, can you just please explain the increase next to dead click? Yes. OK, Sam. So that's what I've been trying to say, that the, it, the, it's a very, very important word because the word increase applies to all this whole table when you're talking about how you use the accounts. So I'm trying to think of that in a very simplistic way. So. Let's look at just one one sort of last time. Let's look at this box here, the dead box, if you like. If you debit an expense, if you debit an asset, if you debit drawings, then that will always be an increase. So if you need to increase any of these accounts, it will always be a debit. And that's what dead click explains. Similarly, for the bottom half of this table, it also applies to increasing the accounts. If you increase liability, if you increase income, if you increase capital, it will be a credit. So increase follows this whole table. Whenever you treat these accounts in the way that's described in this table, it will be an increase. It's when you apply the opposite to the accounts that it becomes a decrease. Um, let's just explain that sort of once more if I can. Let, the easiest way to explain it, to be honest, is um, in the bank account. Now, I've done two, two sides to the bank account tonight, as you'll see. We've, we've received some money in, which is debit, and we've spent some money, which is credit. So I guess what I'm trying to say with dead click is if that word increase wasn't there and I hadn't mentioned it, if I'd said to someone um, with that, that example there of £32,000, so Blake, when Blake bought that shop for £32,000 paying by cheque, 
I could have said to you, the bank is an asset account. We need to we need to put that £32,000 in the bank account. Now, some people might have said, ah, the bank account's an asset. It must be a debit. But of course, it's not because we're not increasing it. So I know it's a bit fiddly and I'm, I'm hoping I've explained it in the right way. But I guess, if, as I say, to me, dead click is the best way of using it. And the but the golden rule of dead click is you have to remember that word there. Every single treatment of those accounts there is an increase. And if you're going to decrease any of these transactions, it's the opposite. That's what you have to remember. So um, great. So people are saying they're, they're starting to click now, which is great. Someone's just said a light bulb's gone off in my head. And that is really good. And I'm really, really pleased about that. Do you know what? This is why I do these sessions. <laughs> I don't do it for any other benefit than to help you guys. That's the only reason I do it. And I really hope it's helped. And I'm, all I'm trying to do really is convey my knowledge and convey how I learned this stuff. And um, once it does click in your head, um, you'll be flying with it. And I hope that this method that I've explained tonight is, is the best method of doing it. Um, as I say, please don't think it's the only way to do it because it's not. Um, there's lots of other ways. And I know pearls, pearls is used a lot. I'm not going to go into pearls now because I don't want to add to the confusion, but Pearls is used a lot. Um, I personally find dead click is more logical than pearls, and I think it's easier to understand. But all the time, all the time you're understanding it, you must must remember about that increase. And I think if you can get that, I think if you can always remember that the increase rule applies to dead click. And if you're decreasing account, you have to remember it's the opposite. So I've got loads of um, loads of comments here. Thank you, Jason. It's finally clicked. Victoria, that's fantastic. Good. I hope it has. That's my, my sole goal tonight was to get double entry in T accounts to click for you. I keep using click. It's honestly not a pun, but maybe, maybe it is. Maybe it is. But uh, yeah, so that's the, the total, the total uh, reason I did tonight was to make this click for you. So I'm going to draw this to a close pretty certain now. Tony says she's going to remember raising the dead. Yeah. It's a bit morbid, but it's a good way of remembering it. You know, it really is raising the dead. Just keep thinking all the time you're looking at dead click. Keep thinking of up arrows if you need to, to increase, you know, what, whatever sort of whatever method you can think of to remind you to increase the code, then think of it. I just remembered raising the dead because it's a, it's a kind of an, a, an expression that's easy to remember. But if you just remember the word increase or if you think of an up arrow or however you choose to remember it, there'll be a method that you'll get comfortable with. And uh, whatever it is, and as I say, you know, when you remember it, when you consistently remember it, you'll be fine whenever you try to um, to to make the entries in your T account, trying to get the words out now. Whenever you whenever you make the entries in your T account, as long as you follow this logic to the letter, then you should never get confused about which way to treat a T account again. So that's that. As I say, this video is going to be Ah, Jeannie says with DR and CR, can you use the word in and out or is that confusing? Ah, I think it is. I think it is. Because if you're using the words in and out, then you're then you're not following dead click, you know? You have to use D for debit and C for credit or else dead click's not gonna work. So if in and out works for you and it doesn't confuse you, that's absolutely fine. But for me, I wouldn't. I would stick to debit and credit. That's the best best way of learning it, to be honest. Okay, so I'm gonna draw this to a close in a couple of minutes. We're gonna put this video up on the YouTube channel probably in the morning now, so you can watch it again to your heart's content. And um, next time, we're gonna be back in a fortnight and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to balance off accounts. So we're going to get even more fiddly next time. Um, probably what I'll do is use the same example if that's OK with everyone. If that's, uh, I think that's probably the best way is to use the same example as we've got tonight. Maybe I'll make it a bit more complicated. I don't know yet. See how evil I feel in a fortnight's time. But I'll probably use the same accounts that we've got here. And that's I know uh, balancing off accounts, again, it's a whole new area. And I know people do struggle with that, which side to balance, you know, which side you carry down the figures, what's brought down, what's carried down, that sort of thing. Um, someone's just said, will the link to the YouTube channel be on the Facebook page? It absolutely will. I will um, Natasha will no doubt um, upload this video to the Facebook page in the morning and you'll be able to click on that and that will send you straight through to the YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is building up quite nicely. As I say, we've got last week's masterclass on there last 
Fortnite's masterclass on there as well. And every masterclass we record now, um, as we go along, will be on the YouTube channel. So if you need to, if you need a refresher, they'll always be there. Okay, guys, well, hopefully that's helped. I really do hope it's helped. The only reason I've done it is to help you guys. So I really hope that it has. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for being patient. And I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. And we'll see you all next time. Thanks very much, guys. Bye for now.